We're back, and thank you so much for being back with us. I'm Ashley Ford at the Miami Book Fair, here with PBS Books, but more importantly, here with the illustrious Jacqueline Wilson. <laughs> Jacqueline, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you know, I'm psyched to talk to you. Oh, my gosh, stop it, because I'm psyched to talk to you. <laughs> First of all, Harvard, me. We could talk about a lot of books because you got a lot of books out, but we're going to talk about Harbor Me. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little overview about what the book's about? Oh, uh, so Harbor Me is the story of six kids in a classroom where young people are learning differently the way all young people do, right. um, whose teacher, Miss Laverne, decides that she's going to give them an hour alone every Friday in a different mm -hmm. classroom. So she's going to leave the room and let them um talk about their lives and talk mm -hmm. about whatever they want to talk about and it's the story of what comes out of those conversations i love it and it's a story about brooklyn it's a story yes. about immigrants it's a story mm -hmm. about so much and you know one of the things that i love about your writing for children is that and for middle grade and for teens like you do not shy away from the real world emotions that we feel as mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. that a lot of people think we, for some reason, <laughs> think we don't or think we it's can't so handle. Why is that so important to you in your work? I, I think um, for exactly those reasons, I think people tend to think that young people can't deal with a lot or that they're not dealing with it or that they're mm -hmm. not aware of what's going on around them. And right. so, uh, I, and I, I, I believe differently. I know, mm -hmm. I remember myself as a young person. I know you remember yourself as I a young person. Do. And all the stuff that we knew but we didn't know how to articulate right. and that grownups didn't think we knew. Yes. And so, so when I'm writing, I go back to that remembering myself as a child and all mm -hmm. that I knew and thought about and questioned and wanted to know. Um, and, and that's what I bring to the young people in the literature. But I also, it also comes from having a deep respect of them, right? right. Like the, I, I respect the people my books are writing are talking to. Right. Um, I respect the reader, you know, I respect the, the kids who are having those experiences. I re mm -hmm. ex respect the kids who want to understand those experiences on a deeper right. level because the, the experiences are so foreign to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like it's important for me to not lie, <laughs> you know, right. and I yes. think if you lie in a book for young people, they're going to know it. So I think they smell it like they're yeah. like, <laughs> like kids will read and the, mm. yeah. now, you Next. know, they know. Yes, they know yeah. when something is not being honest mm -hmm. with them. And this is not that book. Like this book is incredibly yeah. honest. I think with the stories of these kids, one of the things that struck me almost immediately when I was reading it, because I was reading it while a lot of these conversations about immigration are happening at mm -hmm. a national level. And it struck me that is anybody talking to kids oh. about these issues? Like, is mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. talking to children yeah. about, like, because we're constantly talking about uh -huh. the children caught up in these situations. Yeah. But what, what about their stories? Yeah, yeah. And what, yeah, what about the space to have those stories? Yes. I mean, I think about, um, you know, growing up, one of the things I remember so deeply is growing up with my uncle being in prison right. and our family not talking about it and saying, we can't talk to anybody about this. And, and all my conflicts was, I'm like, I love my uncle. You know, he's my favorite person in the world. Right. Um, I love when I go up and spend time with him. Mm -hmm. um, he's a smart guy. He's a great dancer. He's funny. And here I am having this whole conversation shut down. Right. And I think, you know, that applies to the young people whose parents are being taken away. It applies mm -hmm. to the young kid whose father's just told him he can't play with guns anymore. Mm -hmm. It applies to the girl whose dad's incarcerated and feeling like this is not something I can talk about. And, right. and the kid who is, you know, from Puerto Rico and an American and people are assuming mm -hmm. all these things about him. So yeah, it definitely is. Um, it's frustrating to me that people are sometimes afraid of young people and yes. afraid to have those conversations because they think they're going to damage them somehow. And I think the bigger damage is not having those conversations yes. with them. As one of those kids, I can absolutely, <laughs> absolutely tell you that that is the truth. Mm -hmm. um, was there a particular point of view with these kids that was hard for you to write? Because I always uh, wonder that mm -hmm. with uh, books with sort of, uh, not necessarily multiple points of view, but definitely, yeah. you know, multiple stories and different kinds of stories mm -hmm. about living. Because yeah. you don't live all those lives, you know? <laughs> it's so true. I think there were 
two that were hard for me. I think Holly's story is hard to write mm. um, because it's a story of recognizing your privilege and also having shame around privilege. Right. Um, and for me, being able to understand that having grown up in an underserved community and mm. um, and always thinking that wealth was the other and the great thing. Right. And then knowing that wealth has its own complicated story. So mm -hmm. really having to investigate that and see Holly, um, you know, I think Esteban's story was just hard because I started Harbor Me a long time ago mm -hmm. um, because the, none of this stuff is new. You know, yeah. we the it, um, deportation, you know, the murder of young black boys, like all of these are things we've right. been talking about for years and years and years inside our communities. Yes. Um, and now they're being talked about on a grander scheme, but uh, on a grander scale. But um, thinking about the heartbreak of being a child who has this family, this intact family where, mm -hmm. you know, we're all here together, parents, siblings, you know, loving home, hardworking dad in this case. Um, and then someone from the outside just comes and crumbles it. Yeah. Um, and, and the unimaginable of that. Um, yeah. for me and ha having to imagine it was mm -hmm. really, I mean, I cried a lot writing this book cause, yeah. um, it was, it was heartbreaking to have to go in and tell these truths and, mm -hmm. and experience them through the character. You know, right. I always say the books aren't necessarily physically autobiographical, but they're mm -hmm. emotionally autobiographical. Yes. So even something with Ashton, like, and getting mm -hmm. to what does it mean to be a white boy in this black and brown world? What does right. it mean to be a kid? who did have privilege and access and doesn't have it anymore and, and trying to negotiate that world mm -hmm. um, and then getting your butt kicked. Like, yeah. um, you know, and the heartbreak of that, of people not seeing people. So these yes. eighth graders just saw an, a pale neck that they wanted to slap, right? right? And they saw this vulnerable kid that they felt like they could feel more powerful by disempowering, by right. bullying. And and to me, that that's a lot of what goes on in the world and a lot right. of what breaks my heart about the world, that yeah. sense of people not seeing people. Well, one of the things that I feel like this book deals with just so incredibly well, so, so incredibly well, are the real introductions of shame mm -hmm. and of physical fear for some. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to figure out what to do with those feelings yeah. because that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, feeling things is like, Ooh, you know, whatever. It's then where does it go? Yeah, yeah. What do I do with it? And yeah. it's so interesting that through these conversations, they're learning from each other yeah. about yeah. what to do with their emotions at that age and with mm -hmm. their introduction to those emotions about their experiences. It's so true. It is wild to me that you thought to write that. I mean, really, it <laughs> yeah, is wild yeah. to me that you essentially wrote a book about how to deal with your tough feelings at this age yeah. and find that empathy for each other. Yeah. How long ago did you start this book? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It was, <laughs> I, I think I was so afraid of it because it was mm. so, it felt so overwhelming to right. me. Like, how do I how do I even begin to tell this story? And I really feel like around the time that I was writing Brown Girl Dreaming, mm -hmm. I was also writing parts of this. And I'm usually working on more than one book at a time. Mm -hmm. But but I had these kids I, in my head, some semblance semblance of them in my head, and and I kept asking myself, "What do you guys want from me? What do you want from me? Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to tell this story? I don't know how to. T I don't I don't have the capacity to tell this story. And it was just one person at a time, you know, let me figure out who's going to tell this story. At one point, it was Holly telling the story, but it wasn't her story, it was Haley's story. Mm -hmm. And and once I realized it was Haley's story, <coughs> it started falling into place and parts of it started making sense to me, how the mm -hmm. characters were going to engage with each other, you know, the tiny crush that they had on each other, mm -hmm. um, the way that, you know, Haley finally sees...
we need to see each other and smell yes. each other and 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 touch each other and that's yes. the way we come to understand each other not via the internet or anything right. and so it helped me think in thinking about what i wanted as an ambassador helped mm -hmm. me think about what i wanted in harbor me and at one point it was called the dream of america and that I decided I didn't want that title. First of all, because the publisher kept coming with covers with flags on them. I'm like, stop with the flags. Yeah, I don't want any more like, flags. I know, yeah. no, I'm good with the flags. So, so, and then I realized as I was writing and rewriting that it's a book about how we harbor each other. Yes. How do we take care of each other? Um, how do we see each other? And, and then how do we go from there? And how did you figure out that Haley was the protagonist? Because I mean, I'm, <laughs> cause reading it, like, I'm just like, oh yeah. Like it yeah. doesn't really, it feels really seamless in that way yeah. that she would be the, the through line throughout yeah. the book. But now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, wait, why was it? Because <laughs> she had she had the longest journey. Mm -hmm. I feel like I felt like her journey started when she was three years old. Yeah. In this way that the other kids started later. Mm -hmm. Um even um Esteban's journey, it's a new journey for him and that, mm -hmm. you know, it's that moment it's in that time that his dad is taken away. For Amari, just as he's coming of age, he's starting to realize the rules of the game. You know, um, Tiago is in, in this new America is realizing that they see his mother as something other, even though right. she's very much an American. Um, right. um, you know, Ashton coming to a new town. Um, so they were their their journeys are all quite new. Um, right. <clears throat> even Holly, like she's coming to terms with like her class privilege mm -hmm. and what that means. Um, but but for uh, for Haley, her she's been thinking about her journey for a long time. So it felt right. like the truest through line. I love it. I love the book. <laughs> Thank what you. are you working on right now? Because oh. I know you're working on something, Jackie. Because this uh, is what was this book number thirty three? I, I I lost count. It's somewhere I in think the thirties. I counted and I think it was book thirty three. <laughs> so I know oh, you got something goodness. else going. I have a book coming out next year called Red at the Bone. That's an adult book. So you know I'm I I did my picture book. I did my middle grade book, and yes. now I've been working on Red at the Bone for a while. Mm -hmm. while I was actually working at it back in the green room. Yes. Um, and it's a story of a family. It moves from um, the Tulsa massacre mm -hmm. to 9-11. Yeah. Um, and it, it's the story of what it means to try to build anything, family, wealth, community, as a person of color in a country that is constantly massacring your dreams. So it yeah. starts with what people, some people call the T Tulsa riots. They weren't, people were massacred. Yes. It occurred in Tulsa, Oklahoma to 9-11. Right. Um, and, um, and hopefully there's a lot of hope in it, but it's a story of the, a family through a bunch of generations. Wow. Yeah. So you're doing it's a multi-generational. It's, yeah. <laughs> it, it's mainly one family, but you learn right. about the people who came before them. Wow. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be amazing. Oh, uh, I hope it's going to be finished soon. <laughs> it better be. I want to read it. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm you. so ready for it. Thank um, you. Um, getting back to Harbor Me a little bit. Um, one of the things that I love about so many of your books is that they're set in Brooklyn and that Brooklyn becomes, or New York and Brooklyn, and that it becomes a character. Mm -hmm. The city always becomes a character. Yeah. Talk to me about that choice, because I know that like part of it is just like, you know, home. Oh, man. But this is so. Yeah, I, I love Brooklyn so much. Mm -hmm. I, I love all the different parts of it. And I could have I, I chose to set this in Crown Heights mm -hmm. um, because Crown Heights is changing so rapidly in the same way right. that I chose to set another Brooklyn during that period in the mm -hmm. 70s and 80s in Bushwick because um, I want people to know these neighborhoods exist and that right. the people in them are real and that they're not getting discovered. Right. Like there are people yes. who are, as we say, Columbus because mm -hmm. Homeboy didn't discover anything. <laughs> um, but that there were people who lived here and who are living here and who are mm -hmm. thriving and and I want them to be seen. And so right. and so Crown Heights is his own character. Park Slope is his character. Bedsty, Bushwick, mm -hmm. Gravesend. Like we have all these different sections of Brooklyn that make up the whole of of Brooklyn. But right. each one of them is very individualized. So yeah, that that's that's definitely Brooklyn, and it's a very particular part of Brooklyn. Yes. 
Yes, Brown Girl Dreaming had Brooklyn in it too. Yeah, Bushwick. Yeah, in Brownsville. There in Brownsville. Yes. And, you know, Jackie, one of the things that I really like about your writing in these books, especially when Brooklyn is one of those characters, is that you, like you said, you don't just introduce us to these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You give us history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is it about, like, sort of, I guess not... Because it's not like you're giving people history that's not always already available to them, but you put it in this story. Yeah. And I, it makes me wonder, like, what is it with you in, like, the histories? Because you are all these, all of your characters yeah. have their own histories in Harbor Me, and yeah. you go into those histories. And I just, I, I know that part of writing a story is always giving, like, a little bit of background, mm -hmm. but you make worlds. Yeah. how do you how are you using history to make worlds oh uh, that's such a great question You're so smart stop it. <laughs> stop it it's it's so important for me you know um i'm here because of them i mean and i say this every day like if it wasn't for my ancestors i would not be sitting here you know we would not be sitting here having this conversation here. we wouldn't even be allowed to read, right. let alone write. And, and look at this. I know. <laughs> look at this. I know. And here we are changing the narrative. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in order to change the narrative, we need to know the narrative. And mm -hmm. so um, I do research. You know, I, I mean, we know the history of New York is the Lenape people, right? Yes. They were the indigenous people of that city. And, it, and we're walking on, you know, the places where they died. And mm -hmm. I think that we can never forget that we were not here first. And, right. um, and, and because of them, we are. And, right. um, and so that that's the case for everyone. So I'm going to look at my character's parents and their grandparents. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at where they came from, the history of that place. I'm going to um, look deeply at where they're existing in the moment, mm -hmm. because I think all of that is so important to not only storytelling mm -hmm. but um memory and um and our own deep responsibility for being here well thank you so much oh. for being i to be like i mean a protector oh, of those thanks. histories because you know it's not just you but you're one of them oh, and doing you. that work is often often undervalued oh. but it's so important thanks thank you, ashley thank, thank you. you and thank you for joining us we will be back in just a moment i'm ashley ford with pbs books we're at the miami book fair don't go away or if you do come back really really soon <sighs>